Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here, and we're continuing on with the Kenneth Wells stationary engine build. And you remember the last video we uh, soldered up, or I should say I soldered up, the uh, fuel tank, and that was a bit of an adventure. And I kind of decided that, um, you know, the, pro the propane torch that I have is probably just a little bit too hot. So I'm going to continue on with the uh, uh, fuel system build, and uh, we're going to do some soldering today and try to get it, uh, get it finished up. But... I'm going to go old school. So what I have here is an old uh, copper soldering iron and uh, just out of frame right over here I have a, a little camp stove. So I'm going to get the camp stove fired up and get this heating up while we get this stuff here ready to solder. So um, all right so we'll get that heating up now this is this is pretty old school and I've never done it, but we'll see uh, how it works. And uh, I will be honest, I did uh, do a sample piece and just to try to see how it would go, and and uh, and uh, it seemed to work okay. Well, that's going to take a little bit of uh, time to heat up, so we'll let that heat up. And in the meantime, we're going to prep this. So this has all been uh, cleaned, uh, sanded, and, and wiped down with some denatured alcohol. That's the only reason why I'm wearing the gloves that and I've got a little bit of acid in this cup. Now I'm using a Forney's uh, soldering tinning flux. Now this is, uh, this is zinc, uh, zinc chloride. So I know a couple of the, uh, my subscribers, namely Chirpy says, hey, you can make your own um, flux by dissolving some zinc into some hydrochloric acid. But that, and I tell you what, if I need more, that's what I'll do because this was like six or seven bucks. It's outrageous, right? And uh, I think I can make a, a half a gallon of it for six or seven bucks. All right, so let me uh, let me pause the camera here and, and find a, a, a brush um, a little more suitable for brushing these out, and I'll be right back. Okay, I found a little brush. Okay, so on the uh, burner tube, there's a couple little slits uh, cut in there for allow the alcohol into the burner tube. So uh, the only thing I've done here is that after I've cleaned it up, I put a couple dots here to let me know where they're at. So we're going to assemble this. Nice uh, slip fit for these pieces here. And it should be, uh, should be exciting, maybe, I don't know. We'll see. And I'm going to do one at a time here. So I'll start here with the end. And I'm just going to dab some of this around this opening here. And then I'm going to put the disc in. Get some flux around the edge. Okay, so that one's probably ready. Now I want to take a little bit of the solder and I want to twist this into a ring. Just a couple loops, like so. And nip that off. Alright, so I've got just a little ring of so fine solder here that I'm just going to sit on the top. Oops. This is a little fiddly, I will give you that. Alright. So let's uh, check out our soldering iron here and see if it's hot enough. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's pulling. I'll brush that with some flux. Really, a little copper brush or a little wire brush, I think, is what I need. And I've never really have no experience with these, other than I do know that uh, they they do get pretty hot. So, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this, and hopefully you can see it. And I'll let that sit there for a second. Oh. Oh. 
All right, that was that was pretty simple. I'll put this back over here in my burner. All right, so now uh, that's the first one. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other two. Put a little solder flux here. Put my cap in. Put just a little bit of solder flux here. And roll up another couple pieces or another piece of solder here, like so. I got a little bit more than what I need there, we'll see. I'll put it right there in that cup and hold that. We're going to try this again. All right. All right, finally the last one. I'm going to paint it with a little flux. Put my disc in. A little flux around the ring here. Wrap up another couple. Bits of solder. And that on there. Alright. Same thing. Giving it time to pull the heat from the copper to the uh, <clears throat> to the tube and draw it through. Okay, so that bit is uh, soldered up. I'm going to let it cool, and the next thing I'll need to do is <clears throat> solder. Uh, I need to solder the fill tube onto the tank, and I need to solder this pipe into the tank. So I'm going to let that cool for a few minutes, and we'll come right back. Okay, so I've got the uh, iron heating up over here and cleaned it up a little bit. So what I've done is I've um, cleaned the pipe where it goes into the fuel tank and I've clamped the fuel tank down so that uh, I'm going to try to apply some heat. And I'm going to try this one um, by applying some solder to the end of the soldering iron and just see if I can get it in there to run around. Just like that. And I believe it did. Now I might have to file a little bit of that off to uh, I'll have to file a little bit of that off because I got a little much solder there. Uh, but by the time I file it and, and paint it up, I don't think anybody would be the wiser. All right, so the next thing I need to do is solder the uh, tank on. Let me get set up for that and we'll come right back. Okay, so I've cleaned up the fill tube, okay, and I've got a little ring of solder here. I'm just going to set that on the shoulder. Well, actually, I think I'm just going to set it on top of the tank, just like so, and set this down on it. And this has been fluxed. So now I'm just going to use the soldering iron to apply enough heat until it melts that ring of solder. we go and it has melted no, it's not all the way down there <laughs> all right it's gonna be cantankerous there we go let's try this again guys. I don't know if that took or not. I think I got a ring of solder around there. Let's take a look here. 
I think I do. I've got a little blurb here on the top, but that looks like that's all the way around. So I think that's pretty good. All right. So next thing you do is let this uh, cool down, and we'll do we'll do a uh, a leak test. So we'll see you here in a minute. Well, the fuel tank and uh, the supply pipe and the wick cups and the bottoms and everything, uh, the fuel um, inlet, our fill tube has all been soldered in place and I checked it's watertight. It's going to need a little bit more cleanup, um, you know, simply because I got a little sloppy here and there. But uh, I'll do that on my time and off camera and I'll get it painted up and everything. Uh, but uh, probably we'll try a burner test anyway before I do all that um, a wick test because I got some ideas that I want to try out. So you know, um, these soldering irons. You know, these are these are old school, and I tell you what, if you uh, that's interesting. Uh, it's amazing, first of all, how much heat that copper uh, holds. And this one was probably actually a little bit too big for the job. Um, but you know, if you can get your hands on one of these, yeah, try it out. It's kind of kind of interesting. You know, sort of fills you full of I don't know nostalgia. You know, like Lucky Strikes and Schlitz. Finally, the last one. Paint it with a little flux. Put my disc in. A little flux around the ring here. Wrap up another couple. Put the solder. And. that on there. Alright, same thing. No, oh, oh, enough of that. <laughs> we need to get back to work. <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh, so the only thing that uh, really I need to make uh, now for this is a uh, is a just a, a plug to go on the top. It's not uh, mandatory it's optional but you know I think it would look right so you know what let's uh, let's go over to the lathe and chuck in a piece of aluminum do a little knurling and some turning and some drilling and let's finish this up okay guys so I got a piece of aluminum here that I turned down to uh, a half inch OD um, I don't think the size really matters but the uh, <clears throat> by the time I put a knurl on this this is going to raise up the edge a little bit and my fill pipe is 716 so I want it just a little bit bigger than that so I'm just going to knurl a little area here. Um, oh, I don't know, probably, you know, maybe a quarter inch or so away, and and just one pass of the knurls, and that's what I'm going to make the uh, uh, fill cap out of, and then we'll part it off and clean it up, and turn it around and drill a hole through a vent hole through it. So let's get started. Thinking about right there is enough. take a look at that and see what we got. Oh yeah, I uh, think I was clamped down a little bit tight, but that's going to work. Alright, so at this point, I want to change tools and I'm going to turn the shoulder down um, <clears throat> here. Uh, to fit in the fuel tank. So let me uh, get the tool ready and I'll bring you right back. Okay, so I got the uh, turning tool in and need to turn this down uh, to a diameter of about uh, 275,000. So let's get on that.
All right. It's me throwing stuff on the floor all the time. All right, so we've taken a few passes off there to get somewhere. Let's see where we're at. And we are at uh, 308. So I want to be down to 275, so 25, 35. So I'm going to take about 15 off of this pass. Give or take. And let's see what we got. I'm not going to get anal retentive about it. I just want it to fit in the hole. Okay, that's a little, little tight. So we've got some more to go. See where we are now. No. Let's see. I am at uh, 280. So let's just trim a few more off. Sneak up on it here. Not quite there. That's it. So let me come in here and clean up the shoulder. Actually, I think I'll just do that with the parting tool. And so let me get the parting tool in and I'll bring it right back in. Okay, I've got the uh, parting tool in here and I just want to sharpen up this edge. All right, and I'm gonna come over here about yeah, to what looks good. We'll start this. Lock the carriage. that up a little bit with the file. Take a look at that. <clears throat> oh yeah, I think that'll be all right. We'll hit the top with the file a little bit. So, all right, so let's finish parting it off.
Tell you what, while I'm filing, I probably ought to knock this edge here too. Just like that. All right, and that's off. So let me uh, let me dig that out of the chip pan and uh, get a drill bit and get things set up, and I'll bring you right back. Okay, so I have the uh, I have the uh, the vent vented cap uh, reversed in, in the three draw chuck. I'm going to face that little nub off. I'm going to pile it, and then I'm going to drill it with a number 47. <laughs> So this is a number two center drill. And then I'm going in with the number 47. Okay, that serves as a vent hole. So we'll go all the way through with it. Okay, we're through. Now let's just touch this with the file. Let's take this out and see what we got. All right, and there we have it. A fill cap that should go right in there. So there we have. So okay, I think I got a little burr over here on the center. I need to clean off a bit. All right, so. Uh, let me come back over to the bench and let's uh, let's uh, let's take a closer look at this and see if we can make this thing burn. So I'll see you over there. Okay, guys, I'm I'm still working on these camera angles. Okay, so I have the um, the fill cap done and the fuel tank and everything is finished. And now I need to um, I need to clean it up and paint it and that sort of stuff. But like I said, that's just something that I'll do um, when I have some time and I'll do that off camera so as not to bore you to death. There's the uh, little plug, if it's okay. The knurls are mm, okay. I had the uh, had it clamped too tight. I'm still trying to figure out the scissor knurling thing. It uh, works quite a bit different than my push type bump knurler. Okay. So I have um, 
been wondering about wicks, right? And so I picked up some, um, this is a clothesline, and I thought clothesline was uh, cotton, at least it used to be. Uh, but I cut off a piece and uh, hit it with a flame and it melted, so I can't really use that. Now, Chirpy said that uh, the people he deal with use um, steel wool and the finest steel wool that they can get. So what I have here is some 4 ot steel wool. And I'm just going to tear some off, maybe, and um, see about making some wicks. I don't know how well this is going to pick up on the camera, but I'm just going to very loosely um, take some of this. <clears throat> That's probably enough there. And I'm going to stuff it down in the wick tube. Like so. I think that's all the way down. Feels like it's bottomed out there. And I'm going to trim this off. Oh, to just above the just above the thing. So I don't know if you can see that. I've stuffed steel wool in there. And uh Chirpy says that that will uh that will draw. Now, it it may uh but maybe if you don't have it too tight and I don't know if I have that too tight so let me take off another piece and this time I think what I'll do is I'll just cut it up into some little sections like that <clears throat> until let's see so this one's a little looser so we'll stuff this one into this here So it bottoms out. Okay, I think that's it there, and we'll trim this one off. <clears throat> and we'll do the same thing with this one here. So hopefully that's coming in. So this one's a little tighter than these. So we'll see how these burn. And let me trim these off. So that they're all about, I don't know, maybe. <clears throat> eighth inch or sixteenth of an inch somewhere in there above the burn tube like that so we're going to try this out I don't know if it'll work and at the same time I guess we'll find out for sure for sure if our our uh, fuel tank leaks so I've got some denatured alcohol here I want to pour some into a, a bowl <clears throat> I don't have a I don't have a funnel but I do have a syringe so I'm going to see if I can syringe it in there. If uh, the syringe will live through it or not, I don't know. We'll see. All right. Get another bunch here. Probably should have a little hose or something. Oh, that's better. That seems to work pretty good, actually. Get another syringe full. All right. I wonder how much is in there. Let's hit this with a striker and see if these light. And they do. I don't know if you can see that. There's flames coming off of there. You see that? And uh, so that might work. We'll uh, let that burn and uh, I'm still open for suggestions. Well, you can hardly see it. it almost burns clear. <clears throat> so um, I'm still looking for some suggestions for 
um, for some flame, I'm sorry, for some wick. So if you got a better idea or something, let me know. I'm gonna let this burn and see what happens. But uh, um, Chirpy, you're absolutely correct, my friend. Uh, steel wool will work as a wick. So, and it probably, if I loosened it up and pulled some of it out or something, I've got it, like I said, I've got it cut off about, oh, you know, an eighth inch or less, less, 332nd maybe, uh, from the top of the, of the wick tubes. Um, but they all seem to burn about the same, uh, whether if it's the looser packed ones here or the tight ones, like I said, I don't know if you can see that. But, um, well, that pretty much concludes the, um, the build for the, uh, for the fuel tank and the uh, the burner wick, wick tubes, uh, you know the the burner system or whatever it's called. And uh, I just want to uh, thank you guys for being patient with me and watching this uh, series as it goes. It um, um, you know it's, it's been a, a fun project and it continues to be a fun project. And the uh, from here, I think that we're going to be moving on to the. Um, I think it's the uh, firebox sides, so I got some 20 gauge uh, sheet for that. So in the next video, we'll we'll start on the firebox uh, sides and uh, go from there. So uh, guys, hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, all the subscriptions and the comments. And if you um, if there's anything I can do to make things better or do things uh, in a better manner, please let me know. Um, I appreciate all the feedback and. Uh, if these uh, videos entertain you or, or if you like them, please consider liking and subscribing and sharing. And we're getting close to Christmas here, so I just want to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas no matter where you are. And, and I hope um, you get an opportunity to spend time with family and friends. So other than that, have a blessed day.